sounds from the Jimi Hendrix song, The Wind Cries Mary. I want to use uh, those um, sequences, which are known as double stops, two strings sounded on adjacent strings. But I want to express those shapes in terms of intervallic distances, so that if you don't know about intervals, this will at least teach you something. It's also going to teach you more about the architecture and the real estate of the fretboard, hopefully. So firstly, I played a D5, otherwise known as a power chord, just those two notes, the D and the A. D5, E flat 5. power chord. I then played an E minor. That's my root, the one, the f as it's in intervallic terms, and that's my, f my flat three. E minor, F minor, F sharp minor. Okay, I'm going to talk more about that interval. You skip a fret uh, string below. It's a minor third interval. A major third interval, there's my E root, there's my um, A flat note on that string below, one, one fret string below. That is E major, E and a major third, and that's E and a minor third, E minor, and you can take that up and down the fretboard. Right, the next thing I did something like that's known as double stops. It's a note, two notes on adjacent strings sounded. I played an A and I played a D. The note below the root note, in this case the D, is known as a fourth. So that's those two strings. That's a D4. That simple. So you you know the guitar is tuned between G and B strings. You need to compensate. So from that shape, from D to G, to that shape between G and B. And then you go back to. Fourth, fourth double stops. Okay, so you know minor shape, you know major shape, and you know um, fifth, and you know fourths. The relevant in a, in a guitar and standard tuning that never changes. So you learn something about that. But consider this. What does that represent? Well, it happened to be a number one hit in the year I got married, 1982, by the Steve Miller Band. That's an A, that's the minor third interval, and that's the perfect fifth interval. Now I'm combining those two concepts. A minor, A to a minor third, A to a perfect fifth. So, I'm playing the notes A, C, E. Now you need to know your triads. There are three notes in a triad, and an A minor chord is a, a root, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. So that's A minor with my root there on the A. And when I go from E to C to A backwards, I'm doing the third inversion of A minor. Because I'm starting on the third note in A, C, E. I'm starting on E, C, A. So, she comes down simple. Guy made a number one hit in 1982 with that little sequence. I actually saw him live here in Sydney uh, as the opening band for Carlos Santana and his band. Anyway, besides that, what happens now? So you know A minor in its first and third inversion. Now what happens when I do this? I'll go Well, if G is 
my root, then I've started on one major three perfect fifth. So I've played the third inversion of G major. There's D minor, and then I'm playing. I'm playing G E C C major. C E G C major, but I'm starting with a G, so I'm playing the third inversion of C major. My root's there, but that's my third, my third note in the sequence, the perfect fifth. These things are probably best used up here on the high end. C. So now you've got some framework. So you're not going to be playing randomly like by ear like I did for 50 years. You're actually understanding what notes you're going to target. Like I showed you yesterday. Um, we've got um, 14, 17 and 22. I've got an F sharp, an A and a D. That's D major, but in the second inversion. Because it's D, F sharp, A is a D major tri-hat, but I'm starting on F sharp, A to D. And if I bring that finger back one, it's a major seven, D major seven. Because I'm playing C sharp, which is one note below the root C sharp. It makes it a major seventh chord. How's that, huh? Three notes make up a chord. There's C, E, there's my G. I'm using my ear. I told you yesterday, if you, with a major chord, you count three spaces, depress, two spaces, depress. C major in all its glory. Just those two fingers. One, two, three spaces, one, two spaces. And a minor, one, two spaces, C, E flat, G, C minor. It'll be sounding like the late Elif van Eyland soon. But now you know what you're doing. You're not doing it at random. You actually understand why. And I'm giving you a little easy formula if you're struggling. As long as you know where your root is. Skip two, depress, skip three, depress. On one string, that's the formula for B minor, B major. This, I might have made a mistake, one, two, three. That's a major, one, two. Just think about it. I've given you enough information. So when you want to work out four sequences, you first Look at the real estate you've got to work with. So when you see these guys, <laughs> but you're going to start skipping strings and you're going to start building some really unique sounding licks. Now I'm not that good yet, but I'm giving you the, the structure for you to think about because everything that happens in these levers of yours it's coming from in here and if you train the thing in here it's going to translate to the fretboard because you'll build up the muscle memory and the physical attributes that you need but as long as you understand you now have a plan to work with i hope this helps you because it's really important stuff thanks for viewing